Hi Simply Church, I hope you're having a great week so far. I just wanted to give an extra video this week. Back in back in March, we had a, uh, you would have seen it in your news emails, we had a meeting with everyone that brings children along to uh, Simply Church or has children part of Simply Church. And we invited any, um, any people, parents, uh, grandparents, people that look after kids to come along and to have an open dialogue and share how um, kids right across the ages um, how we can engage, how we can be just a family together. And so there's some really good things that were shared, little different stuff that, that was going on, thoughts, ideas. And, um, and I had an opportunity to share with those that were present just something of the heart of, of Simply Church and, and what we want to try and recapture and the kind of culture that we want to change. Um, and then I sent out an email just highlighting some of those parts, which hopefully I'll include uh, are attached to this to this video uh, as well, so you can read through some of those. Basically, it was suggested that this was shared with the wider church as well. So I thought I'd make a little video just to explain a few bits and pieces, and then obviously, as I said, I can attach the other parts to the email so you can read through it as well. And I think it's really important that we, as a whole church, do get hold of this. We are a family. This isn't. Um, uh, uh, this walk isn't about just being individual Christians who are trying to nurture their own um, personal spirituality, but how are we together growing and encouraging each other to love Jesus more, to um, to reach out to those around us, to overflow with the same love, grace, generosity that Jesus did. And that should be uh, right across the ages. This isn't just for the adults. This isn't just for once you turn 18 or 17 or 16, but right across the, the ages. And so what we've tried to do is not just try and create a separate kids church, which, which we've had before. And I know it's very popular. It's very popular for, for people who bring kids along. It's um, engaging for them. It helps them to understand bits and pieces. And there's some really good parts to having a separate gathering. It also gives time to parents to spend time uh, without distractions of children being around. But there's also dangers with it. It, it can really create a the, um, and us and them kind of church. It can create, even the whole idea of kids church means basically we set up a separate church for children. And I don't really see that in the Bible. I see them living life together, that the people hung out in each other's homes. They helped out with general life and they encouraged each other in the things of God. And that children, although not mentioned usually within the Bible, are would have just been part of that. And we, we see something of that when Jesus encourages his disciples to uh, let the children come to him. And he has this amazing statement of that, that the kingdom belongs to these, that there is something within this, the, um, I don't want to say simplicity, but there's something within children who, where if they haven't had lots of disappointment or negative experiences, they are able just to trust and take God's word at face value and believe God. I think I've shared a story before where I've, you know, I've just seen kids just stepping so boldly out in faith, you know, praying and miracles happening because they just believe that if God said it is true, then it is true and they operate. And so there's so something for us as adults to learn from our children and from the children within our church and from one another. And so by creating a separate church, actually we all miss out. The young, the children, the young people miss out on seeing uh, the adults worship and pray and share and maybe some of the life and maturity they bring. And we as adults miss out on something of that, that faith, that trust that children bring along. And now I get it that, they, you know, that it's hard sometimes when they're very young or have got um, different things going on in their life. And, you you know, feel like it's disrupting a meeting. I, I've been there. I've got my own kids there. Obviously now coming into teenagehood and one's an, an adult now, um, but I've been through it. We, we planted uh, or helped to replant, I think it was our second church when Ethan was only nine months old. So I, I, I totally understand the whole having a young child and you know seeing them grow up through the ages. And in those days, because we were replanting or planting, there weren't many children or any children at times for them to engage with. And so how did we integrate them and make them part of the church family was really important. So... One of the things I think is a struggle for us is that if we've been in church any time or been to different churches, we've seen this culture of, you know, kids' church, youth work. So you've kind of got children, teenage, young adults, adults, older adults. We've, we've compartmentalized the church. We've split all these age groups up and we've created these great little 
functioning units. Um, but I think it's actually in some way diluted what it actually means to be a church. And a church is basically a group of people of all different ages, of all different backgrounds, with all kinds of stuff going on. Some people we'd get on with naturally, some we wouldn't. And yet somehow the spirit unites us together. And, it, you know, there's this often move, even not just for splitting up kids, but we split up our churches into into groups in which um, people connect with. So this is the chess group, or this is the knitting group, or these are the people that like theology or, or whatever it is. And we suddenly, we say, but you just hang out with that people because they're like-minded, so you're going to get on well with them. And then how on earth is that representative of what Jesus says about us being a body, a body of different parts to make up a whole? And that means ages and abilities and likes and dislikes and um, gifts and all of those kinds of things that God wants to bring all of these things together and to operate as a, as a church. And so what's hard about what we're trying to do with Simply Church is it really is shifting a mindset and a culture of how we do things. Now, this doesn't mean that there won't be things for the kids where you, where you have a, uh, two age groups of youth running. It doesn't mean that there won't be times when maybe the children will have a little group and they'll, they'll gather when we're gathering on a Sunday or they might go off and have something in the week or a weekend or whatever. There's still opportunity to see the young people and even the younger children to connect with one another, can set up little groups, parenting groups, all of these kinds of things. There's nothing wrong with having those things running. But all the while, what we need to be thinking of is how can we still be one church, one family? How can I encourage even my youngest children to recognize that they're actually part of this family? They're not something separate. We're not just trying to hurry them off because they're an inconvenience and we just want our time. But actually, we're here because we want to gather together and encourage each other to love Jesus. And this is the big issue. Church has become about us. It's become about what I get from it. And if our kids can't go out, then I, you know, then I'm not going to get anything from it. So what's the point? Or, or you know, if they don't have the right music, or if they don't have the right seating, or they don't have the right format, or there's too much preaching, or there's too much worship, you know, whatever it is, we we come for what we get. So we'll go to that church because it offers this, or we'll go to that church because it offers that. There is no hint of that kind of living in the Bible. People went to church to pour out their lives into each other. That's why Paul writes, my life is like a drink offering poured out on behalf of my brothers and sisters. We've got to shift this mindset. It's not even for us just to come and have a spiritual experience of God. Ultimately, it's to come to bring glory to him and to encourage each other to love Jesus. That's why the gifts, it says that the gifts are there for the common good, for building up the church. And so this is the kind of thing we want to teach our kids is I'm not just coming for an experience. I'm not just coming for what I get for my own personal time. I'm coming because I want my brothers and sisters to love Jesus more. And how can I bring something and share something with them, encourage them and honor and glorify God in that? And if we taught our kids to say, look, hey, look, you've got something to bring. We need to hear from you. If you're not part of this thing, then we're missing out because we're missing out on some of the faith that you guys have, the questions that you guys have, the life that you guys have, that we want you to be able to feed that into the church because actually we all want to be built up together in Christ and so now we exist for the good of each other and the glory of God not just for the fulfillment of our needs desires insecurities or whatever it is that raises its head and so suddenly the church is now operating what I see in the book of Acts where they come together Acts 2 42 and they're devoted to the apostles teaching to the breaking of bread to fellowship they're selling excess stuff so that no one has need. They're living as a community, life together. Not necessarily a community as in one place. They still had their own homes, but they were sharing what they had. They were seeing God's miraculously work among them. They were wanting each other to know and love Jesus. And I guess that's what our heart is for Simply Church. This isn't about shifting times or places or just creating smaller little home churches. It's about asking ourselves the question, what does it look like? to be this kind of body, a body that is one, united in Christ, that is living life together on a daily basis, of which our children should be part of, and so that we're all reaching out and sharing the gospel and people are getting touched and saved. Miraculous life becomes the norm because we are living in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's so much more I could say in there, but what I wanted to encourage us, as I encourage those that bring kids along, is that we need to trust that God is God, that he is enough. We actually don't need anything else other than um, the, the, the relationship that God has 
with him, with each other. It's like this interdependent relationship that it's not just my relationship with God, but all we need is him together growing in him. And so my encouragement is, is believe that. Believe that we don't need all these other different bits and pieces to keep us happy and entertained or fulfilled or insecure is in check. But actually God will do a great work because it says where the spirit is, there is freedom. It's God that will bring freedom, life. When our hearts are captured and captivated by Jesus, all we want is him. Nothing else matters. And that's whether you're young or old. I mean, I have seen kids crying out, worshiping God's arms raised. And we're talking about sub 10 year olds, you know, seven, eight, six year olds who know and love Jesus and sold out for him. And they have nothing because they're in, I've seen them in places like where I've been to Poland and other countries where there are, you know, they don't have all these other things that we have. All they have is Jesus and they are like loving him and serving him and serving one another. So I know it's possible. I know this is what God wants to do. And so our encouragement is as a church to pray that God will continue to do that work in us. But us asking ourselves, how can we be part of that? How can we help that? If we don't have kids, how can I encourage the kids to be part of the church? How can I encourage the church to be praying and loving Jesus more? How can I be helping and serving? How can I be looking out for this daily discipleship and daily reaching out to those around us? And for the parents, you know, to be thinking, OK, how can I encourage my children to see things differently, to to be part of this thing, to see that they're valued and known and loved and to realize that actually, you know, there are others around us. It's not that we have to always be looking after our kids and stuff. I and mean, know we have to be careful within reason, but there may be you know, allowing the church family to be part of that, asking questions, having open dialogue of a family of what can this look like? How can we live this thing out, work it out together? And so I think it's important, like. It was suggested that this message goes out to the whole church. And this isn't just saying the kids are the most important thing. And I'm just doing a message about the kids. So I don't want anyone to kind of feel like that. But what I'm saying is, is this actually, everything that I've said is applicable to all of us, whether we have kids or not. It's applicable to us as a church of what simply church really God wants it to look like and to be like in the church that we see in the Bible. This isn't just our idea or our fancy or our new whim. This is what the Bible church looked like in the Bible. They lived to life together. No, they had their own homes, but they would eat together. They would go for walks together. They would worship together. They would cry together. They would give. They would serve. They would help. They would just invest. And they knew there was something bigger. And Jesus was more important than anything else. They had kept themselves from the idolatry and the captivation of the world and had their eyes on Jesus. And that's the encouragement that we have moving forward as a church. I'm not saying this is easy. Shifts, cultural shifts like this are hard. The whole concept of Simply Church, if we really start to walk in it, is probably much harder than any of us would realise. And yet I believe when we actually do surrender our lives to God, when we say, okay, I've had enough, I now give it all to you, and that we just walk humbly by the Spirit. I tell you something, though, as hard as we thought this would be, we will realise that this is more life-giving and life-changing than we ever realised. That actually, why didn't we ever live like this beforehand? Because, man, my heart is now just so overflowing with Jesus, like my whole life, my whole day, because my brothers and sisters are investing in me and I'm investing in them and I'm being built up and I'm being encouraged so that when I'm having conversations, I'm sharing Jesus more, I'm praying with Jesus more, that Jesus is on my heart when I wake up and throughout the day and when I go to bed, there is so much full of Jesus from one another, living this life together, saying this actually, it really is all about him, that actually we will be so transformed and changed that we will say man this was the best way we could ever live why did we ever settle for this other stuff so i just want to encourage you with that if you have any thoughts or questions mail me grab me speak to me speak to your home church leader um, it's really good for us to continue to have this open dialogue so really what we're doing moving forward is we still want to integrate the kids we still want them to be part we want to create this whole family environment we will still have the youth uh, groups running we'll still look for other ways of connecting with the kids and maybe it's sometimes having other groups for them or things outside we will be looking at all of those things but the heart for any of it is this how can i encourage each other to love Jesus more, to want to be in community more, to build one another up. And then the overflow of that is then to reach out to the lost so that they will be met with the good news of Jesus and be saved. That's the heart 
that's where we want to go. We haven't got it all figured out. And so again, we just value thoughts, prayers, ideas as we work this thing out together. Have a great rest of your day and I'm sure I'll see you all soon. Bye.